joint project between NASA and Lockheed Martin Corporation resulted in the launch of a satellite into Earth orbit in, back in October 2008. That wasn't too long ago. And it was called IBEX, the Interstellar Boundary Explorer. The, the acronym IBEX, I for Interstellar, B for Boundary, EX for Explorer. Its purpose was to seek out and measure what are called energetic neutral atoms. And here's another uh, abbreviation with letters ENAs. Those are energetic neutral atoms. Those were plain gold walking around scratching regular atoms, not charged. It did exactly that. And as with so many NASA projects, it has been a spectacular engineering success. But the analyses and conclusions that have been drawn by gravity-only astrophysicists from the data it has recovered are somewhat less than spectacular. The unvarnished truth results from the mission have so far revealed that there is indeed a huge ring of energetic neutral atoms surrounding the sun's plasma figure, far out just at the boundary of that volume. The electric universe explanation of the existence of this ring is quite simple and not unexpected at all. A brief description of the plasma discharge in which our solar system lives is this. The sun sits at a roughly the center of a volume of plasma, positive and negative ion, and serves as the positively charged anode of the electrical process that this volume contains. The outer surface of this volume thus attracts negatively charged electrons from interstellar space because of the central positive charge. These electrons enter the plasma and are attracted toward that positive sun at the center. Thus, the edge of the plasma, called the heliopause, becomes an effective cathode. Cathode is a source of electrons for the discharge that lives inside the plasma sphere. There are some positive ions inside the plasmas due to natural ionization caused by cosmic rays, and more are emitted by the sun itself, and these positive ions are repelled by the positively charged sun, and they move outward. Any electrons that enter are accelerated inward because of the positively charged sun at the center. If either of these flows attain sufficient velocities, they collide with neutral atoms, and new pairs of positive ions and electrons are formed. This process is called ionization. The newly liberated positive ions move outward. When these accelerating positive ions, astronomers call them the solar wind, it's not a wind at all, it's an electric current, but when those accelerating ions approach the heliopause, the cathode of this apparatus, many of them recombine, that is to say, unite, reunite with electrons coming inward from the cathode, and a neutral atom is the result of each such recombination. There's nothing unusual about this. This is an entirely well understood and historically long observed phenomenon in electric plasma laboratories. Positive uh, ions coming out from the center and uniting with the electrons from the outer edge coming in. In those experiments, the recombination process emits energy, actually the same amount of energy it took to ionize the atoms in the first place. A portion of this energy appears as light and in the lab is called the cathode glow. Now, NASA released a video about IBEX, and you, you see that what uh, the call signs of it, the, the title of it is, uh, but it's, it presents all this as being, unquote, quote, unquote, newly discovered information, quote, that shows the influence of the heliosphere on the local interstellar medium, and it's different than expected, unquote. It's not at all different than expected, and it's not strange or anything like that at all. Different from what NASA expected, perhaps, but not at all surprising to electric plasma scientists and engineers who have seen this behavior and worked with it in labs for many years. One of the first images presented in that NASA video is a picture of the ENA ring followed by the text, quote, IBEX discovered a giant ribbon at the edge of the solar system, an anomaly that has now been determined to be a reflection where solar wind particles heading out into the interstellar space are reflected back into the solar system by a galactic magnetic field. Okay, here we go again. It's magnetic fields are responsible for anything they can't explain. It's actually not a reflection of any kind, and it doesn't have anything to do with a magnetic field. It's the result of mass recombinations of solar wind positive ions with incoming electrons from interstellar space. It's strictly a, a natural electric process. Also, the text that accompanies this figure, previous models showed a boundary ahead of the heliosphere outside the influence of the sun. 
a shock formed by the entire heliosphere pushing through the interstellar material around it. Ibex data suggests that there is no bow shock preceding the heliosphere's movement through space. It's not there. So we here in the electric universe never agreed with the idea that the boundary between the sun's plasma sphere and interplanetary space was a bow shock. This is a holdover from the fluid flow analysis of astronomers that don't believe in electricity. The heliosphere is essentially a plasma-filled region within the huge Birkeland current within which our sun and its planets were born, and it's an entirely electrical process. Just the other day, there was a press release from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center titled, Studying the Edge of the Sun's Magnetic Bubble. Quote, Mysteries abound. In 2009, IBEX returned a finding so shocking that researchers initially wondered if the instrument may have malfunctioned. That discovery became known as the IBEX ribbon, a band across the sky where ENA emissions are two or three times brighter than the rest of the sky. In my upcoming book, I made a comment about that. Anyway, David McComas, IBEX's principal investigator and professor of astrophysical sciences at Princeton University, said, quote, The ribbon was totally unexpected and not anticipated by any theories before we flew the mission, end quote. Well, I just pointed out that this is a well-known formation of these neutral atoms that is well-known in the laboratory. When the ions coming out from the anode, that is from the sun, the solar wind, when they get close to the cathode, that when these ions recombine with electrons, they become neutral atoms. And these neutral atoms then diffuse away from this region where they're formed back toward the anode. The formation of energetic neutral atoms near the cathode is completely expected in the EU, the electric universe, electric sun model. And there's no excuse for them not to know about it and run around waving their arms, looking at the sky, wondering how in the world this could ever happen. I mean, we've, we've been talking about this for years now. The best image of the EU model of that region, I think, was offered back in 2011 by Walt Thornhill. The ENA ring is in the horizontal plane of that image. The Birkeland current is a vertical thing right down in the column in the middle. It is in cross-section and appears as the two densest regions of yellow dots to the right and left of the center. That is, the ENA ring is circular, it's like a donut, and then the two circles are the two parts of the donut that are exposed when you cut it. The only thing missing from this image is a heliotail going upward vertically from the sun's heliosphere that looks almost identical to the one in the diagram going downward. Recently, we've heard whispers about the possibility of there being dual tails on the heliosphere. On August 5th of 2020, NASA released a sketch that shows how distorted the shape may actually be. There's no real reason why two tails have to be symmetrically opposite each other. Apparently, many stars are formed at points where Birkeland currents have sharp bends, right-angled bends. In uh, August of 2020, the new Atlas website published an image showing, quote, strange strings of stars. Many of the stars in that diagram were born where the Birkeland current strings, so-called, take very sharp turns. Hence, the two tails connected to each of their heliospheres would not be at precisely opposite sides of them. There's no need for it. There are several images available on the internet of stars forming on strings, Birkeland currents, often at jagged twists and turns of those so-called strings. At any rate, Ibex seems to have opened another set of new ideas about the shape of the cosmos. And it all points toward one thing. It's inherently electrical in nature. None of it was predicted or expected by gravity-only astrophysicists. And apparently some of them still do not recognize what IBEC results really mean and what they're really saying to us.